All right, students, um, if we drop a basketball, uh, does the VT graph look like this? No, right? Because we're on Earth. And Earth has an atmosphere. And because of that, um, besides the weight, the basketball also experiences uh, air resistance, uh, which acts in opposite direction to the weight. So the net force is going to be smaller than mg, and because of that, the acceleration is going to be smaller than g. In fact, if the basketball is moving fast enough uh, that the air resistance actually matches the weight, then the net force is going to be zero. That means acceleration is zero. What does zero acceleration mean? It means that the speed doesn't increase anymore. So that is the terminal velocity. So let's go back to the graph. So gradient less than g, and then it reaches a constant terminal velocity. So is this graph correct? It's wrong, right? Uh, because the acceleration got to change continuously. As the basketball drops faster and faster, the air resistance uh, gets larger and larger, and therefore the acceleration gets smaller and smaller. All this happen continuously, right? Continuously. There should be no abrupt jump in the acceleration, meaning it should be a curve, not a straight line segment. So does this mean that this is the correct graph? So we have a curve and then it hits the terminal velocity. Now, this is still wrong. Huh? It's still wrong. Um, for example, there's something very wrong here at the origin uh, at t is equal to zero. So at t is equal to zero, the basketball is just dropped. It has no velocity yet. So if it's not moving, there's no air resistance. So at this point, the net force is still mg and therefore the acceleration is exactly equals to 9.81 meter per second square. Meaning our graph should start with a gradient of 9.81. Get it? So at the origin, the graph should start off with the exact same gradient as the straight line graph with gradient uh, equals to g. So is this correct now? It's still wrong. Huh? It's still wrong. What's wrong with this graph? Look at here. The gradient of this graph has an abrupt change here. That means we are saying that the acceleration uh, was non-zero and then suddenly it becomes zero. So as I said earlier, the acceleration has to change continuously. So it has to become zero gradually. Huh? In, in fact, in theory, it never actually reaches the terminal velocity because the gradient just become uh, flatter and flatter and flatter as it approaches the terminal velocity, but you actually never quite reach it. So that's it. That's the VT graph. Remember, it must start off with a gradient of 9.81 meter per second square, and then the gradient will gradually flatten out, flatten out towards zero, and as it approaches the asymptote of the terminal velocity. Okay, we are done with the VT graph. The AT graph is very easy. Uh, it starts off uh, being 9.81 meter per second square, and then it approaches zero, right? As simple as that. The ST graph is slightly more interesting. So this is the usual quadratic curve if there is no air resistance. But there is air resistance, right? Um, but we are still going to start off with a gradient of zero since uh, resistance or not um, you, we, is dropped from rest. Huh? So the initial gradient has to be flat. So u is equal to zero. But because of air resistance, it doesn't drop as fast. So your graph should be lower and also the gradient should be less steep. But uh, more importantly, your graph should show that it uh, eventually it approaches a straight line graph. Because eventually you approach the terminal velocity. The velocity is kind of constant. So your ST graph should kind of approach a straight line graph. So you start off being a curve, and then you end up being a straight line. All right, that's all. Ta-ta!